Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Peter Popper. I will talk about the VIPA study. I was the project leader for that study, and I'm currently working as a head of department consultancy uh, for ISIP. And ISIP, <coughs> sorry, is the Institute for Fire Protection, and that's in Belgium. During this presentation, I will give you a short uh, scope, a short uh, introduction of the scope of the VIPA study. I will talk about the configuration of the large scale tests, about the test configuration, the fire source. I will give you an overview of all the five large scale tests. I will not mention them right now, but we'll get on in detail later on. And at the end, uh, I will give you the conclusions of the large scale tests. Uh, I think normally it's at the end of the presentation you can ask questions, but during this presentation, I think if you have a question, just raise your hand and we can uh, immediately answer the question. First of all, the very long title. You see him here, I will highlight some words. VIPA, VIPA is the Vlaams Infrastructuurfonds for Personeelsgebonden Aangelegenheden and that's the Flemish government. It means that the study was sponsored by the Flemish government. The study, the study was performed by Warrington Fire Ghent, the uh, fire lab, and the University of Ghent. Fire safety in, ho in homes for the elderly, in this case the fire safety is to assure a safe evacuation is to limit the exposure to smoke. And the elderly, they are important characteristics of the habitants because they are not the standard population. They are more, uh, can th the smoke can be more harmful for elderly than for the, the standard population. <coughs> what we investigate was alternative fire safety measures. That means because in Belgium we have more a passive fire protection system and in this study alternative safety measures were investigated meaning smoke extraction, sprinklers and or both. We have invested them because we have new care concepts and you can see this in, in the next slides. So the, the current care concepts are you have a common area here, you have the evacuation route and this is separated, it's comported. And new care uh, concepts, you have a common area that is located inside evacuation route. Means that if you come from the room, you come into an area where there's a potential fire hazard. Because in common areas nowadays, you can have kitchens, for example. Meaning that there's a high risk for a fire. During the VIPA study, we divided in three phases. First of all, we looked at legislation in other countries to see what is, is already existing in the countries. And that was in the Netherlands, France, UK, Germany and Sweden. Then we looked at what are the available uh, fire safety measures, the active fire protection. We determined the test configuration and also the fire scenario, because it's also very important. During phase two, we did the large-scale test, and the presentation of today will be regarding the large-scale test. In the last phase, we did some additional CFD simulations. It was mainly because you have very expensive large-scale tests, but you want to see the influence of certain parameters on the conclusions of the fire test, meaning for instance, a door open or closed, or any other kind of parameter. We determined the safety level, and this is in the case of the elderly. I will not mention this during this presentation, but the conclusion was that in case of elderly, exposure to smoke was not allowed. This is very radical, but the, the, the reasoning behind that was you have for standard populations, you have uh, certain doses you can withstand, but that's for healthy uh, uh, young people who can evacuate themselves. For elderly, there's not much to be found in literature, and they said, okay, we don't allow exposure to smoke. This is a very important criteria. 
At the end, we had then measures to obtain the determined safety level, meaning that uh, what can we do at compartments, on the doors or whatever, to assure that elderly are not exposed to the smoke. This is the configuration of the large scale test. And you see here, this is the common area, but here the fire source. This was approximately 100 square meter, so it's rather large. And you have two evacuation routes, here and here, with a room that's located just on the evacuation route. We have uh, put one fire resistant door here and one smoke resistant door there, just to see the influence of both types of doors when you have a fire in this room. We, this is the end of the evacuation route, and during the tests, we close those doors after one minute. Why after one minute? Because we assume that everybody is out of this area within one minute, and then the door is closed because it's considered compartment. So, of course, then, then you need to have your door closed. Um, the ceiling, the height of the ceiling was 2.5 meters, so that's pretty common. And the height of the doors was 2 meters, so you have a little extra on top. Just look if I have set everything. Yeah. Uh, this is also important, you will uh, hear later on. We used cellular concrete walls as, uh, as, as the, the wall. Boundary conditions, doors are closed. The doors of the rooms were closed during the test, of course, to see what, what influence of smoke propagation was inside the doors. And then, no openings in the compartment. Two meters, yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> and Holland, they are bigger. 2.3. Well, they used two. But the influence of the height of the door, I will explain it later on during it. But th there's an influence of the height of the door related, of course, to the height of the ceiling. And li like I was saying, no openings in the compartment, that was not because the budget was all, but this is a very important parameter for these uh, tests. If you have an opening, you know that smoke can escape. So the purpose was to have worst case scenario where you, you fill your room completely with ro uh, smoke. Another important thing is if you have a closed compartment, then you will have pressure buildup because it's closed, it's very important. The fire source, a two-seat couch, a normal standard couch. Question. Sorry. Question. Yeah. Yes, it was. This is not mentioned, but it was. Yeah. Yeah, but we, we saw this morning that well, we will talk about the couch later on. Yeah. And this is a good, good uh, remark. So, polyether foam, timber frame, polyester coating, and the ignition, ignition source was fiber boards dipped in heptane. We just ignited it with a bricky. <laughs> I don't know the English word. Um, these are some um, pictures of the configuration. Here you see the common area with the evacuation. Here is the fire source. This is, is more in detail. Here you have also a view on the common area, but if you come from the evacuation route, this is the room, a room, it's six by four. This is normal uh, standard dimensions. This is one uh, evacuation route, and this is the other one. Here you see already Thermocouple 3, I will tell you some more about that. And you can also observe that this was before the first test because everything is clear white. And the lights here were still working. I will explain a little bit more. Uh, what 
to observe during the test. We want to see smoke propagation and visibility, but it is very, very difficult to quantify because what is smoke propagation and what is visibility? This is abstract, so we wanted to quantify that. How do we do it? We measure. We measure a lot. What do we measure? Temperature. Like I say, a temperature tree, a tree, a temperature tree is, is like we, we saw here. This is all different thermocouples at certain heights. The first two meters is for every 20 centimeter and the last every 10 centimeter at one location. So we used one, two, three, four trees. We had additional thermocouples located a little bit around, but these are very important for to see how the smoke ev evolves. We measured pressure, we measured radiation, we measured the radiation behind the couch. We measured CO, CO and oxygen, and we used smoke detectors, normal smoke detectors, not linked to uh, security and, and so on, normal. Yeah. We used cameras, also, the cameras we used, I think we can see them. Um, no, I will use this one. This one, a camera facing the fire source. This one is facing the common area. And we also used cameras in both evacuation routes. We put it at a height of 1.4 meter. And we also used our data science lab. That's uh, Florian, who is giving another presentation here is from Data Science Lab, and he used that to uh, evaluate the visibility. I will explain that a little bit later on. This was the couch from IKEA. <laughs> so we have five tests, but of course you can put something in uh, on fire, but if you don't know the heat release rate, you're, no you're nothing with that. So what we did, we, we, we had an extra couch and we measured the heat release rate. So again, ignition here, and you see after one, two, three minutes, it starts to very uh, burn. And you see it also on the heat release rate here. So this is from the couch. And I've also added some common alpha T square curves. I think you are familiar with that. And you see that it's closely to the medium alpha t square. An alpha, a medium alpha t square is very used in a design of fire scenarios. Sorry, yeah? Uh, how did you measure Under a hood? Under a hood, yeah. Yeah, under a hood. And uh, good that you mention it. You see here, it's, it's very clear, but it gives so much suit that at a certain moment, the hood cannot extract anymore. And you see the influence of there. So it was under a hood, yeah. The couch here, you see that we have maximum 800 kilowatt. This morning, we have couches 2.5. It, it's all depending on, on the amount of foam that's in there and the type of foam. But this is, for this case, as a fire source, very representative because it's closely to an alpha uh, T square medium curve. So at this point, we said, okay, this is good. Why didn't we not use a, a pool fire? Because you can say if you have a pool fire, you know what fuel you have, and then you have your heat release and so on. Uh, the explanation is very simple. We will use also sprinklers, and you, if you put sprinklers on a pool fire, we, we would not risk that for these tests. The large-scale test, as I was saying, we did five tests. First of all, the reference test. The reference test is the configura configuration as we have seen, meaning you let it burn and you look and you measure. Nothing more. It's the first one. Second one, we apply fire-resistant doors. We apply them at the location of the uh, evacuation route and the common area. So we separate common area from evacuation route. Third, we used a smoke extraction system. The fourth, a sprinkler system. And the fifth, combination of smoke extraction and sprinkler. These were the five tests. 
We'll begin with the first, of course. The reference test, this is the same configuration as I've shown you previously. And the purpose of the test was to monitor the evaluation of smoke propagation if you have only a detection system. That's all. What do we expect? Of course, compartment will be filled with smoke, but how quick? We don't know. We don't know. We expect a pressure buildup. Because it's a confined space, you have temperature increase, so there's a pressure buildup. If you have a pressure buildup, meaning that you will have smoke propagation through the gaps around the doors. That's what we expect. Just to say, like I said, we had cellular concrete walls, but the vertical joints were not always finished with plaster, so we had little openings left. And during the first test, we were not smart enough to, <laughs> to lower the cameras, we put it at two meter height. The biggest advantage of doing such much test is you learn from the previous one, and here we saw, I will tell you later, that it was not good. We observed during the test smoke detection around one minute. I think that is rather common. Filled very rapidly with smoke. I will give you some temperature graphics. A uh, small amount of smoke in the rooms, so the rooms were closed, uh, a small amount, and the fire self extinguished to a lack of oxygen. If you look at this photo, you see that the timber frame is still there, all the foam is away, but if you look at the left side, the foam is still there. So you remember the presentation before lunch, saying that if you have no oxygen, it stops burning, and you see it here, it stops burning. Remarks, of course, like I said, the position of the cameras was too high, meaning that it started and immediately there was smoke before the camera, so we had no visual of the cameras. Uh, pressure measurements at that moment, we could not do it, uh, we could not record it, but we could look at it, at the device, and we only saw a, a 7 Pascal overpressure. This is very low, this is very low. And the reason for that, I will explain later. First of all, temperatures. Remember the thermocouple 3, I will... Here, this one, so near the fire source, we measured. And as you can see, in function of time and temperature, you see that you achieve on top of that almost 300 degrees. So the plastic lights that were in nearby melted. <laughs> we did not use that anymore during the second one. But what you also can see that at 20 centimeters below of above the floor, you have temperature increasement, meaning that your smoke is there. I didn't find that fancy enough, so I did it like that. This is the same as here, but in function of height and time, you see how the smokes, smoke drops down at what time. You see it very clearly here. I did it with a uh, temperature uh, difference of 25 degrees. And uh, I, I see you all thinking how this is possible, because you already have temperature of smoke in the beginning of the test. That, that, that's not possible. It was very hot that day. It was 27 degrees. So you have also already above, it was summer, yeah. Above the 25. I will show you during the next slides and the next test that, that it begins, of course, and you see it drop. But I think you see here already that after 100 seconds at that location, the smoke has reached the floor. With the next uh, test, I will have pictures. It's more. It must have been smoke. The reason why is because we put it far away from the fire source, and you see it uh, very clear that it, it goes down. From the smoke also radiation comes to the surface. Yeah, but as, as you see here, that the temperature here, 
as, as only 30 degrees or something like that. So radiation from the smoke, if you have here 300 degrees, then you can say something about that. But if you, s you see it here, it's only 30, 40 degrees or something. Uh, this one is the one we saw, this one is more away in the common room, and these two are in the evacuation routes. So you see, obviously, that the time to descend is much longer, but at a certain moment, all around, you have smoke until the floor. So it's completely filled. So the conclusion of the first test was, it's completely filled with smoke within three or four minutes after ignition. So this is very rapidly because you have 380 cubes completely filled with smoke. The influence of the pressure buildup on the smoke control or the fire resistance could not be evaluated because the gaps between the cellar concrete, uh, there, there was a leakage to it. So if you have a leakage to there, you do not have a pressure buildup. So we couldn't define the influence of the pressure buildup. It will be evaluated during the second test. We saw that the radiation flux was around 30 kilowatts. So this is a severe risk for fire propagation. But it is contradictory in, in the last one, the influence of oxygen on the fire. So you have your 30 kilowatts but you don't have oxygen, so but it's, it's, it's enough, 30 kilowatts. Are there any questions about the first test? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 I know there's a difference on that. We, of course, we, we did the heat release in, in, in open air. And I know that the heat release in, in confined, where you have reduced oxygen, will be different than, than what we have. Yes, that's correct. The heat release you measured uh, 30 kilowatts per square meter. Yeah. What distance was that? Uh, I think it was um, a half meter away from the couch. But you have to keep in mind that um, I think 1.5 or something like that. Okay. One just above the, the couch, yes. but uh, as you have seen, I will try to... Because if I see the temperatures, yeah. uh, um, let's say 1.5 meters, it's, it's high, in, high enough to, to, to ignite other materials. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Um, but if you have a cupboard, that could be. yeah. So it it was just a matter of of giving an a, a magnitude of of radiation flux, not to say okay, you will have fire propagation. No, it's just just to to measure that. Um, oh, sorry. Any other questions for the, for the first test? No? Then we go to the second test. Second test, we put fire resistant... Do you have pictures from the first test? No. Oh. Video? No, <laughs> because the camera was too high. <laughs> it was too high. Uh, immediately there was a lot of smoke and we, we didn't... So we learned and we lowered it. <laughs> Um, yeah, for the second test, we used fire doors. We put fire doors at the common area to separate them from the evacuation route. What did we do again? Monitor evaluation of smoke propagation. What to expect? Again, it will be filled with smoke very rapidly, but now we expect a pressure buildup. Why do we expect a pressure buildup now? Because we put some boards against the cellar of concrete, so it was airtight. So we, we expect pressure buildup. If you have pressure buildup, again, smoke propagation through the gaps around of the doors. 
Uh, like I said, we positioned the cameras a little bit lower. And the two doors we used was an S door. I don't know if you're familiar with S door, but I show you a picture and you will understand it. And a double hinged door set like this. So a double hinged door set is just, I, I don't know if you understand, it's just in both directions. An S door is a double pivoted door set, meaning that you can only open it in one direction. You see, so the left one goes open in that direction, the right one goes inwards. And the biggest difference between these two is that here you see you have rebates. It's covered. Here you don't. We thought we will use these kinds of doors because here you have big gaps and, and the smoke will go much bigger here than, than there. And again, we learn from tests. Observations, smoke detection again, one minute. Common area, very rapidly filled with smoke. Now we have a pressure buildup. And the, oh, sorry. Now we have a pressure buildup and we have smoke propagation in the evacuation routes. And we'll give you some pictures because now, like I said, cameras at good location and we have pictures. We have almost no smoke in the rooms and again, the fire self-extinguish. If you look at this picture, it's basically the same as the first test. Frame, and here you have foam. So, it's a different couch, trust me. <laughs> um, temperatures, if, if we look at temperatures again, like I said, here you see clearly that at a certain moment, uh, smoke drops down. And at this moment, around that moment, smoke detection was activated. So this is very basically linked to each other. This is in the common area. This is in the evacuation route that is separated by the fire resist. So you see that there's a lot of smoke there. This was done by temperature uh, difference of 25 degrees, but you see you only have not 50 shades, but three shades of blue. And therefore, I wanted to do that with an increase of temperature, because if you have smoke, means that there's an increase of temperature. And if you do it with an increase of temperature, you clearly see, much more better than here, that your smoke also drops down to the floor. Of course, it is because the ends of the evacuation routes are closed. If you have open doors, then smoke can go away and does not come back. So this is here uh, the case. Photos. These are photos when you have the fire source here and you see after two, two thirds, you see clearly the scent, the smoke layer. And after four minutes, you don't see anything anymore. So meaning that it's very again, very rapidly until the end. If we look at the couch, then, like I said, the beginning is more or less similar than the test in open air, but at a certain moment you have the lack of oxygen, and you see here, after four or five minutes, it's gone. There's no fire anymore. If we look at the uh, corridors, evacuation route, you see here, after three, four minutes, now five minutes, it's completely filled with smoke. And then comes the, the influence of the door. This door was two meter height, and you have two meter five as ceiling. If your door is three, two meters three, the same will be done, but much quicker. So that's, here is the influence of the door. Smoke in the common area drops down, but due to the pressure buildup, it takes some time to go in the corridors. Same for the corridor two, after five, five minutes and a half, it's completely full with smoke. So is the horizontal scene, is that the, the most producing smoke scene, the door? The horizontal? The scene, where there is the gas smoke gap between the doors. Ah, no, no, because like I said, 
here you have rebated doors. The other ones were left open, but you have the same amount of smoke. And it's not the, 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 uh, the width of the gaps that determines the smoke, but it's the pressure. So should you have less of width of the gaps, it's possible that you have more smoke because the pressure buildup in the room will be much higher. So conclusions of the second test was smoke development yeah. is the same in the fire room. But now we have pressure buildup. So you have smoke progress to other compartments that give you an idea of the, the pressure buildup. It goes up to 120 pascal. That's a lot. And we used gaps of, of I think, around 5 millimeters. So meaning that the lower you go, you go for the gaps, the higher the pressure buildup will be. Um, also very interesting that, interesting, fire resistance or no smoke doors, smoke resistant doors. Because fire resistant doors have, have intermescent product that needs heat, that needs energy to swell and to, to, to fill up the gaps. And the temperature of the smoke is so low, it just passes through. So this is, if you have seen a fire test with a fire resistant door, you cannot open that door anymore because it's so closed. But here, the smoke uh, temperature is too low, so it just passes through. Also very important, we have almost no smoke in the doors. And you have to consider you have a fire room with a standard fire resistant door and you have another door. So in that room, the pressure buildup is completely gone, first of all, to here. So the pressure in the second one is too low to give you smoke propagation to the, 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 the room itself. So if you have a room separated by two closed doors, you have almost no smoke pr propagation. If you have no pressure buildup, you will have less smoke propagation, and that's what we have seen during the first test. We have only seven pascal or something, and we have almost no smoke in the door in the rooms. Again, both radiated flux and influence on oxygen. It's basically the same as the first test. It should be the same because the conditions are the same. Are there any questions on the second test? Yes. 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 Because, like I said, budget is everything. <laughs> but we, the configuration of all these tests was done in advance, of course. There was a steering group also, and everybody had to agree what to test. Because these are very large scale tests, cost a lot of money. And, like I said, in phase three, we did some additional CFD to see what the influence is of certain parameters. But we only did every test once. Any other questions concerning the second test? No. Third test. A third test was uh, smoke extraction. What did we do? We put smoke extraction here in the corner and two air supplies. Why do we need that? Because it's a confined room. If you only have smoke extraction and no air coming in, yeah, you, it doesn't work. So we, we need it both times mechanically. This is very important. Again, purpose to monitor the smoke propagation, what to expect. Of course, what do we expect from an, uh, a smoke evacuation system that it will put the smoke away. That what do we expect? But we expect also a pressure buildup. And you know if you have pressure buildup, it has an influence on your volume flow of your extraction because of the fan curve. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Just trust me. <laughs> but the temperature will also be increased, meaning that your mass flow will not be the same. The higher the temperature, the more extraction volume you need for the same mass that's extracted. So the amount of extracted smoke will change, will not be constant. 
smoke extraction and air supply. If you see these values, I think you all say this is, this is stupid. <laughs> this is very high. I fully agree with that. These are values used for uh, high industrial buildings, uh, car parks, I don't know. But because there you have standards, there you have uh, calculations specifically for that kind of application. Here you have a, volu uh, no, yeah, a volume with a height of 2.5 where you want to use this kind of system. So basically what they said or done is what will be more or less the temperature of the smoke. And on the basis of the temperature of the smoke, as you know, you determine the volume flow. So this is the reason why it is so high. Uh, just one remark. In the beginning, we used two air supplies of 14,500. We have 40,000 extraction. You assume you have under pressure. We had over pressure. Before the test, of course. So, this is my personal opinion. I think that the influence, this is a confined room, you have the influence of your pressure on your extraction and your air supply, and they go sort of e equivalent. But this is, at the end, we did two times 10,000, meaning 20,000 supply and 40,000 extraction, and then we had under pressure. So confined rooms and mechanical extraction and supply, tricky, tricky. Here are some uh, pictures of the, this is the air supply. You see this is a little bit smaller because we have two of them. And here in the corner, we have the big one. And that was an opening of uh, one square meter done in the ceiling. We observed, again, smoke detector activated approximately one minute, and at that moment, we activated the smoke extraction system, manually. <laughs> During the growing phase, the visibility decreases. During fully developed fire, bad visibility. And during decay, it increases again. This is normal because in the beginning, the temperature of the smoke is low, so you have good extraction. Temperature gets higher and higher. And at the end, during decay, again, temperature will be lower and you have good extraction. In contradiction with the first two tests, we have continuous supply of oxygen. So the couch is completely burned away, and I give five credit points who found the couch here. It's here. <laughs> It's completely burned away, completely burned away. Uh, also in sm important, no smoke in both rooms. Here are some temperature uh, graphics. Um, in this case, they are not so uh, relevant or important because you see it's, it's smoke everywhere, even in the corridor. It's not high temperature, but it's smoke everywhere. You have mechanical supply, you have mechanical extraction. There's a lot of turbulence in, in, in the room. So it's, it's more divided than the previous slides. And you see it also here. If you have the camera again in the common area, you see here this is more mixed than the previous one. The previous one you have clear descent of the smoke layer. Here it's all mixed. And during the fire you see it the visibility decreases, and when the fire is out, because you have no f you know, more flu, then it begins again to increase visibility. This is also, uh, here are also some pictures of the, um, the couch. You see here it burns, and after three, four, six minutes, it burns like it should be. <laughs> this here is after 10 and 12 minutes, it, it seems like it's very much on fire, but it's deceiving a little bit. But you see clearly here that the flames are much higher than the previous test. If we look at 
the camera and uh, the corridors, you see again, it's not so bad as in the common area, but you see that the visibility is not so good. I also for the, the second corridor. Conclusion of the, of the test with the smoke extraction. In the beginning and at the end, good visibility. During fully divided, very bad. Radiation flux, 70. So you know that everything around that will burn also. In confined uh, compartments, there's a pressure buildup, a uh, pressure difference has a large influence on the calculated volume flows because you always calculate it. But if it's if it is it the the volume flow that practice, I don't know. A uh, shaft system can also create an under pressure, meaning that if you have the right balance, you will not have smoke propagation. A uh, shaft system can do also can create an overpressure. For instance, if you have compartment next to the fire room and you have an overpressure there, then you will have no smoke preparation to that room. This is uh, the pressure buildup. Like I was saying, you have 20,000 cube supply, 40,000 extraction, that's a lot. And you have only, yeah, the, the readings are only just to minus eight Pascal, but if you look at that, only 50 pascal under pressure with that amount of volume flow. So this is very strange. Are there any questions concerning the third test? Did I see that the fire was finished 10 minutes after ignition and another picture that was 12 minutes? Uh, I missed it. It was 12 minutes and then the three was on. No, no. Um, before or? I was confused at the first moment. I was expecting not 12, and then it was finished. But you see the couch is still burning at 12. Yeah, like I said, it, it gives maybe a bad impression. It's, it's, this is not fire flames that high. No, no, because should these flames be the same as these, you will not have the visibility after 12 minutes there. You would have the same as this one. Any other questions on the third test? <laughs> no problem. Uh, fourth test. The fourth test, we applied a sprinkler system. <coughs> For obvious reasons, we only applied four and we not cover the entire area because the location of the fire source was known. So we used four sprinklers. They were installed as, as uh, according to the installation guide. Uh, but in this case, they wanted to use another kind of sprinkler. They used residential sprinklers. And, and they used, why? because these sprinklers can function at a very low pressure. And the purpose of this one was to see, okay, if this work has a very low pressure, maybe you can use the water net for supply. You don't need a very large water tank with pumps and so on. So this, is, this was the reason that we used this kind of sprinklers. The RTI, was 35, this is very low. RTI meaning the time when the glass bulb will burst. And, and the lower this value, the quicker it will burst. Activation temperature, uh, 68. That does not mean that the temperature of the smoke will be 68. I will show you later. What do we expect during the test? Of course, fire growth and smoke production will be limited. Not put out, limited, due to the sprinkler system. But what with already produced smoke at the moment of activation of your sprinkler? We don't know. That's why we test. 
This was uh, some photos of the, the spring cliff. You see it here. We measured also, we, we put a thermocouple just behind of uh, the spring cliff just to see at what temperature of the smoke it will be activated. And you can see here the location in relation to the couch. So it's, and like I said, the configuration is as prescribed. <coughs> what we saw, again, smoke detection after one minute, compartment is filled up very rapidly with smoke and the sprinklers activated around three minutes after ignition. At that moment, the temperature of the smoke was around 100 degrees. Visibility was still not good after activation. There was no smoke in both rooms. It's very good. And sprinklers keep the fire under control, but don't extinguish it completely. I will show you some pictures later on. But, again, this was the couch. If you see it here, it seems very good. But if you look under the polyester, you see that the foam here is completely burned away. I will explain later on how this uh, happened. If we look at the temperatures, very low temperature, of course, because yeah, the sprinklers put out the fire, but not completely. And again, if we look at uh, temperature increasements, you have a better view. So you see here that your smoke is, let's say, until one meter. And this, this is in the, in the corridor. So you have, again, smoke until one meter. This is very low. Some pictures here. Um, we, we were confident and we put a camera now <coughs> in the fire room. We were very confident and uh, because the heat would be limited, but what we didn't consider that the radius of the sprinkler is fairly large. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you see here, this is the moment of activation, but after four or six minutes, visibility is zero. If we look at the couch, and this is very interesting, it, it grows like the other test. At three minutes, you see already a little bit of water here, and after three minutes, four minutes, six minutes, you see that the sprinkler is putting the fire out, but not completely because you see here a, l a, l a little bit of flames. So we, we let the test run and we saw six minutes, nothing's happening anymore. So we did uh, after eight minutes, after 10 minutes, we said, okay, now we will open the door. And then that happened. You see? Sprinklers were active just by opening one door, it reignited. Remember the photo, so you have your polyester was intact, but the foam underneath was completely burned away, and you see it here. So it's burning underneath the couch. Is this every time the case? I don't know, but we saw it here. And it will be different with the last test. But here, just wanted to show you because this morning, the influence of oxygen on a fire, even with sprinkler on it. Uh, this was the smoke uh, and the corridors. The color has nothing to do with the, the, the composition of the smoke, it's, it's just I think the camera is readjusting or something like that. What you see here in the corridor is completely filled with smoke. And the other one, completely filled with smoke. So, uh, a sprinkler, is before the activation of the sprinkler, the smoke development is the same. But the smoke is still in the fire room after activation of the sprinkler. So, the sprinkler keeps the fire under control but doesn't uh, extinguish it completely. And as long as the fire is not extinguished, you have smoke pro production. You have a very important uh, thing. 
you have no more pressure buildup at the moment of activation, like we see in this graph. The, temperature, uh, the pressure increasement is very similar with the second test. But the only difference, at around three minutes, the sprinklers are activated, you see a drop, and you have an under pressure in your room. So a sprinkler is very effective to avoid pressure buildup. Uh, of course, a sprinkler is, is also very effective for other things. As you see here, radiation flux around 4 kilowatt. That's almost nothing. Are there any questions on the fourth test? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's the, the difference. Activation temperature is of the the fluid in the bulb. That's the difference. Any other? Did, did Sorry. You for temperature? Sorry. No, no, no. For sprinklers, you, you have, like I said, the RTI, RTI value as a response time index. There's a specific for, uh, you can, you ha have several values for that. And specifically for residential, this is very low. And it has something to do with the thickness of the glass around the bowl. So the fluid itself means that at that, if the fluid has that temperature, it will expand, but it means that the temperature of the surrounding must be higher than the temperature of the fluid. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? No. Then we go on to the last one. Um, why did we do the last one? Because we saw that a smoke extraction is very efficient if you have cold smoke. Like cold smoke. Uh, a sprinkler system limits the temperature of the smoke. So if you combine those two, it should be very effective. We did that here. Uh, Again, we used very large extraction volumes. It's not realistic. I, I'm aware of that. But it's just to see the influence. And also a very important parameter. Here you have your extraction. Here you have your supply, meaning that your airflow is like that. And you see the sprinkler is here. So we did on purpose put the sprinkler away from the airflow from the ventilation, uh, the extraction system because they can interfere, and, and that was not the purpose. The purpose was just to show if you have extraction, you have sprinkler, what do they do if combined as it should be. So again, what do we expect? In the beginning, we, we activate the chef system, you have cold smoke, your visibility will be okay. At the moment that the temperature increases, you have sprinklers. Sprinklers will limit the temperature. And as soon as the, lim uh, the sprinklers are activated, you have again cold smoke and the extraction will put uh, smoke away very quickly. We observed that, again, smoke detection around one minute. At that moment, the smoke, uh, the shaft system is activated, so the visibility is good, but of course, start to decrease. Again, after approximately three minutes, they activated. At that moment, the temperature of the smoke was around 110. Visibility is increasing after activation, as expected. No smoke in both rooms, uh, also very important. And again, sprinklers keep the fire under control, but do not extinguish it completely. If you look at this picture, this is the same effect of a sprinkler on a couch as the previous one. So the previous one, one, you have seen that it keeps on burning, and even with opening the door, uh, of, uh, when opening the door, it reignites, and this test, it stopped. 
we don't have an explanation for that, but it just shows that you cannot rely on just one test to give conclusions on the effect efficiency of a certain system. Because here it worked, and then the other one, yeah, it worked, but it didn't work quite good. So just be careful when you, you see one test, it's not valid for everything. Temperatures, very blue, of course. Again, if we do time increments, you see here, this was the moment of activation of the sprinklers. So you, again, you have your temperature, uh, your smoke coming down, but it is completely gone within a couple of minutes. And you see that more clearly in the next pictures. Remember the, f the, the previous one with the smoke extraction. It took 12 minutes to be more or less clear. Here, you have after four, six minutes, it, this is the same. So it's, it's, it's very good. Here you have also the same behavior again. After three minutes, you have your sprinkler, it uh, decreases, but you still see here a little bit of fire, just a little bit. In this case, we also opened the doors, but there is no reignition. So it's, it's depending on, on the test. If we look in the corridors, you see again very clear that visibility is restored very rapidly and also for the other one. Conclusions, yeah, visibility is very rapidly restored because your temperature of the smoke is low. Radiation flux, again, around three kilowatt. But I want to, to say that we used very high extraction volume. So these are not the volume slopes that, that can be or will be used in practice. So if you see these tests, just be critical on, on what, what critical is not the, <laughs> the right word, but I, I, I think you understand what I mean. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Don't look at boundary conditions. This shows that it, it works. Because in, in, in phase three, we, we also did CFD simulations. And the purpose was if you have an existing ventilation system that's in the building, and for this case, I think it was around uh, 1,800 cube per hour. So this is the, the common uh, volume flow. What was possible with the existing ventilation system? And they said you can double it. So we did simulations with a double, a 3,600 cubic per hour with the sprinkler, but that volume flow was not enough to make it completely uh, clear. So this is very extreme, very high. Normal ventilation system will need not be sufficient. So something in between, I think, will work. But this was not uh, looked at in detail later on because this was not a very practical solution. Any questions on the last, the last test? Sorry. You're not allowed to see that. <laughs> No? Okay, then we go to the conclusions. This was, uh, for, for a lot of us, this is normal, that a, a room is very rapidly filled with smoke, but for a lot of people, this was new, that the time delay was so small. What was very interesting, and I think, if you have confined rooms and more and more rooms are isolated and, and, and not with openings, so you have confined rooms, then you have pressure buildup. If you have pressure buildup in a fire room, then you have smoke propagation. Two other compartments. And I think it was also at the end of, of the last session this morning, this, uh, it was said that in a building, there was a lot of smoke propagation very rapidly. I don't know if you remember. This is because of pressure buildup. If you have pressure buildup in a, in a room, smoke gets, gets to every opening. 
How can you eliminate that? An opening. Remember this morning, close your door. <laughs> we say also close your door. What we say, open it at the uh, outside, of course. Because if you have an opening that's, of course, large enough, you eliminate the pressure buildup. If you open something, the pressure goes away. If you have no pressure, you have no smoke propagation. So. But you have an increased fire. Yeah. Yes, but in Belgium, we compart everything. So if you have a compartment space, EI 30 or EI 60 or whatever, and you have a fire resistant door, then it may burn there. Yeah. But if you let the pressure build up in that room, you have problems with smoke propagation to other compartments. So right? New buildings. Yeah. But the vast majority is existing buildings. Mm -hmm. And then you have a sprinkler system. Yeah. So you have several options to do that. And a, a second option is, of course, the sprinkler system. We saw that the pressure buildup went down, so it's eliminated. But a sprinkler system needs high temperatures. And what with a fire that produces a lot of smoke but no heat? Then you can say, of course, I uh, will connect the sprinkler with the detection. But that's... So there, there are a lot of things that can be done. But this, this is, you can use a sprinkler system. For the pressure buildup, a sprinkler system is very efficient. And I'm getting ahead of it. But it's, it's good to prevent fire propagation also, but not to prevent smoke propagation. Because, like I said, if you have a fire, you have, even with pressure buildup of 10 or 20 pascal, you have smoke propagation. It does not mean that your sprinkler will be activated with these low temperatures. So a sprinkler system must be used where it should be used. And to uh, prevent smoke, it's not a good system. To eliminate pressure buildup, a good system. To keep the fire under control, a good system. So this is, is very important. Uh, of course, fire resistance doors do not prevent smoke propagation, like I said. But it's not only sm uh, fire resistant doors, it's every temperature dependent material is the same. If you have for instance, a gap and you have an intermescent product to seal that, yeah, if it needs temperature, it doesn't work. So this is also, I think, very important. And then, as promised, I will show you some uh, pictures the, from the data science lab. And what they did was they used the camera and they looked at every slide and, and uh, increasing pixels or decreasing pixels and so on. And on the basis of that, they con could um, map the visibility. Red meaning very bad visibility, blue very good visibility. We have only put the slides out after six minutes and you see for the fire resistant doors, the chef system, the sprinkler system, it's pretty red meaning it doesn't work. If you combine the two, it's pretty blue, so that's very good. And as, as, as a conclusion of, of, of this presentation, I would like to say that fire resistant doors on itself are not good. Sprinkler, only a sprinkler is not good. Only a chef system is not good. But it's a pity that I ha don't have more time but in phase three, and therefore, I think you should read the study, <laughs> there are a lot of measures to have uh, el elimination of pressure buildup, to, to, um, to prevent smoke propagation, and so on. They are all clearly stated, what do you have to do in case of that uh, scenario? Are there any uh, more questions on... You, you could not make conclusions on survivability. And, uh, 
No, no, because like I said in the beginning, um, they said that the steering group was uh, agreed that all elderly people may not be exposed to smoke. Not at all. Well, not at all is, is, yeah, it's impossible to do, but to limit, yeah. Because there are no values, no doses that you can use for elderly people. And this is very tricky. Yeah, I had the same question before. And the reason is, um, you have to consider this. This is a study that is done for the Flemish government. If they have conclusions and they want to prescribe something in the legislation, they must refer to standards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's the reason. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. No. Yeah, um, well, the purpose of the last test was only to demonstrate that these two can work very good together. But time, and, and uh, it was, was of essence here, we, we did this study in a year and a half with all the tests and, and, and research and so on. So we, are, we were limited by time. And I agree with that. You can work this further out, but then you need more money. It's always the same, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a question, but for you, maybe not for the group. Ah. There, is, there is, of course, a solution to safeguard elderly people in elderly homes. And I would like to show that to you. Yeah, but like I said, in phase three, we had measures. And I think it's a pity that I don't have the time to discuss this now because you're all, all getting very tired of all these <laughs> sessions. So I think it's best to wrap it up. <laughs> no? Okay, thank you. <laughs>